And this drama is a significant change in the centers of gravity of the world, in places where the growth in the world is happening. If we look, for example, at 1990, just 20 years ago, we'll see there that the group of the United States, Europe, Japan, together, it created 59, 60% of the world product, whereas the developing countries, of course, manufactured much less. If we come to the present, we will say the same developed countries at present are manufacturing only 46% of the uh, global product, and this is a very dramatic change. If we look at the developing countries, the emerging uh, economies, we will, no one heard about China or, how, or India 20 years ago, they manufactured together, despite their enormous size and huge populations, only 70% of the world product. Today, they produce 19%, a huge, dramatic change. The way in which the economy of World A is connected to World B is via international change, globalization, as we call it. And there, too, when we look at what happened in the year 2009, that was the key to the crisis. In 2009, international trade did not only not grow, it collapsed at a rate of more than 10%. Whereas other countries, mainly in Asia, will have a surplus. And in this way, it is the United States that is, in fact, financing their, their growth. And this has been going on for a, long, for a number of years now and has transferred assets from one side of the world to the other. China has accumulated 2.8 or $9 trillion of reserves, most of them in the past five or six years. The basic question, why does the United States have such a huge and ongoing deficit at a time when China has such a large and ongoing surplus. One of the reasons is that in China, the national savings is very high, about 50% of the product, and the United States very low, only about 11%. Is this viable over time? And can a country that enters into a state like this continue to be the economic leader of the world? The next subject is related to the arsenal or toolbox um, available to the world in contending with, with crises and challenges. We all know that there was a very deep crisis and a very deep recession and with the and an expansionary uh, a policy, both monetarily and financially.